All right, guys, I am done with this. I am done. I have tried and tried to defend the deep foy in the comments, and I keep running into people who say it's still the worst nerf blaster ever. I am going to settle the debate once and for all. Is the Deploy the worst blaster? I'm going to tell you why it's not 100%. I'm going to go over every argument and I'm going to take each one down. And I am going to prove that the Deploy is actually a pretty good blaster and that even before the whole Nerf Elite 2.0 and Alpha Strike stuff came out, the Deploy was still a good blaster. So let's get started. Okay guys, if you want a good snack recommendation, try chocolate chips. They're actually really good, a really good snack. This is so good. All right, so we're gonna dissect why people don't like the deep boy. We're gonna go over every argument against it. And there's three stages of going over these arguments. First, we're gonna address the bogus arguments, the arguments that are completely wrong. Secondly, we are going to be addressing the arguments that have some validity, but it's mainly because people just don't own a deep boy and they repeated what they've heard and then third we'll go over the actual valid arguments against it and then I'm going to finally tell you why it's not the worst nerf blaster all right let's go over the bogus arguments there are two. First one is that Coop said it's the worst so it's the worst believe it or not I have heard this as an argument now Coop is entitled to his opinion I'm sure he no disrespect to him he was one of the best nerf creators to ever uh, grace the hobby arguably the best only problem with that is that if he has an opinion of something, everyone else will have an opinion without even owning a deploy. 90% of the people that say the deploy sucks that I've seen don't even own one. And that is 100% true. And when Coop made the video, most of the people that watched it probably didn't even know the deploy existed until then. But he did kind of ruin the deploy for other people. He should have specified that he just doesn't like it specifically. The next argument that's completely wrong is that the deploying function has no practical use, which is so crazy to think about because it 100% does. Besides the fact that it's a gimmick, which is kind of the point of this whole blaster, which it's fun to have gimmicky blasters. Besides the fact that it's a gimmick, the condensing feature actually allows you to store it a lot easier. It also allows you to make the blaster a lot slimmer. I can store this on my shelf over here perfectly fine because it's slimmer and it's shorter. The deploy function is not useless because it actually has a practical use for space and then the gimmicky use for the fun of doing it. This is so fun. Obviously it's not meant to look like a suitcase. It's still a really cool function and the storage part is actually practical. So the deploying function 100% has a practical use. Let's talk about the more valid arguments that people just don't understand. First off is the performance is bad. No, it is not. It is not bad. In modern standards, yeah, it's bad, but so is every other in-strike blaster. In-strike blasters do not have good performance. That's just a known fact because they were older blasters. So if you have a blaster that's older, it's not gonna be better. This is good. This thing gets 55 FPS on average. That's not bad for in-strike. That's actually higher up on the list. Sometimes this thing even gets close to 60. My clear one back here, sometimes this gets above 60. One time it even got to 72. Actually, it did that twice, okay? And I use my Nerf Chronograph to test them. That's not bad for in-strike. That's actually above average for in-strike. That is really good for in-strike. 55 is a good average in-strike performance, what you expect. And obviously it's not usable today, but back then it was, so that doesn't make it the worst Nerf Blaster. You gotta understand the time it came out. It doesn't make it the worst. Next one, I kind of understand, but it's kind of a common thing with in-strike blasters, is the jamming. Now this thing doesn't jam a ton. One reason a lot of people jam this thing is because of the smooth prime, which allow, makes you, allows you to prime really fast. And I've done that, and it actually rarely jams when I prime fast, but if I prime fast, it's more likely to jam, and that's one problem. This is a very, very smooth prime. This is extremely smooth. So the problem is with that, 
people will do it fast and maybe do it like they can jam it. It's not too hard to jam, especially with a smoother prime. This is seen with a lot of other smooth prime blasters that are easy, they can be easy to jam. It's just something that happens, especially a mag fed one. So the jamming argument is kind of just an argument you could give to almost any inch strike blaster. The Alpha Trooper, the Recon, the Long Strike, the Long Shot, the Long Shot jams a ton. Problem is, jams are very common for inch strike blasters. That's just how it was. The Raider, another one. But back in the day, that was just kind of the expected norm. Your blaster is going to jam every now and then. That's why you have a jam door. This actually has one of the better jam doors too. Like you can easily access that really good as well as through the mag. So it was not hard to clear jams in this thing. I'm not saying this blaster is necessarily great. I'm saying it's a solid or good in strike blaster. It was great for its time and it's not my main point is that it's not the worst nerf blaster, not even close. It's functional, they don't break often. So those two complaints, the jamming and accuracy, make sense. Another one that kind of makes sense is the ergonomics, but it's not too bad. The grip itself is okay, it's mainly the trigger that has a little bit of ergonomic issues. It's not terrible, it's not as bad as people say. Uh, I think one reason Coop gave this a lot of flack is he's very picky with his grips. So that could be it. The trigger is the main problem, the grip is fine. But if you kind of use the tip of your finger on the trigger, you won't have any problems. There's a lot worse blasters with a lot worse ergonomics. I'm looking at you, Busby, and even Nerf has done some worse ergonomics and blasters. So the ergonomics aren't great, but they're not terrible. Not the worst, by far not the worst. They are very manageable. All right, let's go into the actual valid argument. There's really only one valid argument with this, and that is that it's reverse plunger. And I could go back again, for the time, that was a standard, okay? The Long Strike was Reverse Plunger. I believe the OG Alpha Trooper was Reverse Plunger. The Recon's Reverse Plunger. A lot of Inch Strike Blasters were Reverse Plunger. That's just how it was back then. If you don't know what Reverse Plunger is, that means you can't give it a Spring Upgrade. Which, and, or if you do give it a Spring Upgrade, it's not going to have much of an impact. Now, I want someone to make a kit. If anyone is watching and knows how to do 3D printed stuff, please make a kit to make convert this to direct plunger. Let's redeem the decoy's name. Come on, guys. But yeah, uh, you can still do some modding, though. Springs Insanity got his to shoot up to 90. But yeah, that's my argument for the decoy. It's not the worst of the blaster. And even before the whole Leak 2 Point on Alpha Strike era came and the nerf Minecraft and all that stuff, even before that, it wasn't the worst Nerf Blaster. Even when it came out, it wasn't the worst Nerf Blaster. It's not even anywhere near the worst Blaster. It's just kind of an average Blaster that has a fun little gimmick. It's a good enough in strike Blaster. There's no reason to say it's the worst. Even when it came out, it wasn't the worst. That's my point. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. My junk drawer. My junk drawer. So many things, I don't know what they're for, but I won't let it go, no, I will add more useless little things to my junk drawer.